Ogres have finally come to Total War Warhammer in the form of their favorite pastimes, mercenaries. I say that like they also, you know, frequently crochet or other weird hobbies. Well, in this video today, I'll be quickly showing off how to get ogres in your Total War campaign, but also we'll be diving into the lore behind ogre mercenaries, easily some of the most famous mercenaries in the Warhammer world. In fact, ogres have their first iterations in the tabletop as a Dogs of War unit before getting a fully fleshed out army list somewhere in the 6th edition. We'll go into the lore of each of the units, the generic ogre bowls, the terrifying Morn Fang cavalry and the professional mercenary ogre man eaters i'm going to talk a bit about their placements across the map explaining instances in the lore where ogres have turned up in such locations even the mystically shrouded lands of ulthwan have seen the thunderous charge of ogre mercenaries in times past and as always guys if you're enjoying this type of content please don't forget to like comment and subscribe all these things help out any content creator you watch and it's free also if you've not yet pre-ordered the silence and the fear dlc you can use the link in my description to my nexus storefront nexus preserves that 10 percent discount from steam while also getting you a steam key directly from the developer and it's a great way to support the channel let's get started on the lore of ogre mercenaries in warhammer so to start us off, I want to show how to actually get the Ogre Mercenaries in your playthrough of Total War Warhammer. And essentially, it's pretty easy. You just have to raise, occupy, loot, pretty much attack any settlement three to five times, somewhere around there. Then you'll automatically get hit with this. Ogre Mercenaries arrive. With a great crump, 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 a large group of Ogres has appeared nearby. Though generally expected to attack and plunder any settlement they come across, it seems they do not seek a fight, at least not immediately, but are looking for the most lucrative call to battle they can find. Wholly untroubled by morality or questions of good and evil, Ogre Mercenaries could be a great boost to your battle ranks should you choose to hire them. Let's jump a little bit forward here to actually hire some Ogre Mercenaries. So now that we've jumped ahead a turn and we actually have movement points, we're going to walk right over here onto the Ogre Camp. Let us begin. And we can now recruit. So we can hire the Head Eaters Tribe, the Horned Guts Tribe, or the Death Belters, Beth, Death Belchers Tribe. And that's going to pop them into my recruitment pool. So let's go ahead and just press, you know, we'll go the Head Eaters Tribe. That's going to pop them in. I press this button to recruit them. So what's cool about this button actually too is that this is the symbol for the Great Maw, which is kind of, um, it's not, I guess you could say the chief deity of the ogres if you want to go down that route. But it is um, a pretty cool little uh, teaser there. And it kind of hints to possible other minor factions being brought into Total War Warhammer, right? Like possibly Amazons, um, other dogs of war added in this way. So I think that the ogre mercenaries is a very exciting little addition to the game. But as you can see, it adds them into the total amount of units available to be recruited. So basically, any time the Ogre Mercenaries pop up, which I'll be totally honest with you, I don't know how frequently they'll appear in your game, what their um, overall recycle is after they have appeared, and if there's maybe a, a larger landmark to get them again. So for example, hey, um, it took me three or five, three to five uh, settlement attacks to get them to appear. Well, now it's going to take... 5 to 10 or, or some sort of scaling, um, well, scale so that they appear less often or more frequently. I'm, again, I'm not really 100% sure. But again, nonetheless, that's how you recruit them. You simply click these buttons. You pay the money. They've got quite a hefty upkeep. I'm just going to quickly hover over these really quick so you can see them. Feel free to pause the video and jump back to any of them if you want to take a look at their specific stats. And the only other thing that is kind of worth talking about with them is the new Ogre Charge. When attacking Braced, charge defenders this unit only loses half of its charge bonus so that is the ogre mercenaries in total war warhammer but let's now go into a little bit about their lore and how they kind of um, see themselves across the map of warhammer but to talk about the lore of Ogre Mercenaries, we really have to look at one individual in specific. And he has probably the worst name in all of Warhammer Fantasy, but Goldfag Maneater is the probably the the pinnacle of Ogre Mercenary. He's the most famous one. He's the most successful one. And he is really the beginning of the presence of Ogres as a tabletop unit in any kind of, I guess, widespread army and the dogs of war now the dogs of war supplement the very first one it had specific rules kind of saying hey these armies can take these units and the army books at the time would tell you hey if you're playing this army here are some of the dogs of war units that you can bring into your army 
uh, having you know certain rules against certain races because of a natural anathema towards one or the other. But of this, of course, eventually spawns the Ogre Kingdoms book that we get in later editions and so on and so forth. And the presence of this character in that as an actual, uh, I almost said legendary lord, but hero or lord character that you can recruit. And these mercenaries, it's simply called Goldfag Mercenary Ogres, go on to, again, have a huge presence in the lore. And you're probably thinking to yourself, hey, you know, they're in the mountains of Morn, so I can see that these... Ogres have a presence in the old world or in Britannia, I'm sorry, uh, Britonia, but maybe less so in the new world, right? Less so in Nagaroth or in Lustria. What are they doing there? This doesn't make sense for total war. Well, there actually are plenty of instances of the ogres appearing in those, those locations. And as we go through this section, I'm going to be flashing up a couple pictures here as we take a look at some fun stuff from the ogres. But Here's a little excerpt here from the Wanderers. Some ogres have branched out of the mountains of Morn, often hiring out as mercenaries and following the lucrative call of battle. Ogres can be found throughout the Old World, in the lawless lands of the Border Princes, the greenskin-infested Badlands, bad lands, Araby, and even Nagaroth. And even more so on that Nagaroth note, Ogres of the Dark Tower. Ogre mercenaries make it to Nagaroth, where they are captured. The astounding part is that they impress the Dark Elves so much they aren't tortured as is customary, but are instead hired into the Tower Guard. So again, we get their presence even in the, the twisted lands of Nagaroth. And we look at the term man-eater, and those are usually ogre bulls that have gone out on campaign as mercenaries and come back as veterans, or even not even come back as veterans, they just stay out as mercenaries. And these are the individuals that are they always have a hodgepodge of different armament from across the world, a, a whole bunch of different weapons and things to choose from because these ogres have been everywhere as mercenaries. So we even get a unit that is named after a, again, a favorite pastime of the ogre. And in doing so with the, with the uh, serving in Nagaroth, these ogres have even gone to Ulthuan. And we get this little excerpt here for Goldfag where more tales are told about him than any other ogre live. And he himself spins a great many of them. Though he exaggerates with wild abandon, he is still the most successful of all ogre mercenary captains. He has won countless battles, looted upon the sacred island of Ulthuan, set eyes upon ruinous Skaven Blight and survived, guzzled more kegs of Bugman's beer than most dwarfs have ever seen, and been personally decorated by Emperor Karl Franz. So again... You get this presence of an individual who's just who's just been everywhere. He's a citizen of the world, as it were. And it, it it is a nice kind of change of pace here to get a mercenary unit added into the game that we've seen in plenty of other Total Wars, right? Almost every other one, you can have that ability. And I've said this before a little bit ago, but it does really excite me to the possibility of them adding in other minor races that maybe don't warrant a full campaign pack dlc but hey you know we're gonna sprinkle in some amazon units here and there or some araby units here and there i mean with the dogs of war if they come to the game and in whatever iteration like if you can play as tilia or as astalia and play those as actual uh, portions there are still dogs of war units that are not tilian or astalian heritage or or, or uh, ethnicity that would be dogs of war mercenary units you can recruit and i would hope that this ogre mercenary mechanic paves the way for them to come in we even get them having a prayer ogres having a presence in lustria right the ogres wanderlust is likely to result in small war bands appearing in lustria but it is quite possible that entire tribes will be hired as mercenaries by those with the gold and we see that right when we jump into these ogre mercenary camps we hire individual tribes not just simply the ogres themselves so there is a little bit of flavorful infusion in there and when you look at the army book for the ogres you get all the different types of tribes that exist for the ogres and one of them is called the crossed clubs every tribe produces man eaters those far-ranging ogres who have fought in many lands the Cross Clubs tribe, however, is infamous not only for the sheer number of its ogres who have fought as mercenaries, but also for the prodigious lies the veteran warriors can shovel out. While many ogres bear battle scars, the presence of so many hard-fighting veterans in the Crossed Clubs ensure the tribe is full of ogres with hook hands, eye patches, peg legs, and the like. So there's an entire tribe that is majority man-eaters. So even more so, just driving home that notion that 
these guys can really be everywhere, especially even in the Southlands. We get this excerpt here of ogre mercenaries fighting against um, the Tomb Kings in Hekara. The Black Maw tribe of ogres descends upon the city of Qatar, intent on a feast of bread made from the ground bones of ancient kings. Several tombs are demolished and countless hundreds of skeleton warriors are smashed asunder by the ogre horde before an army of statues marches out of the Charnel Valley and utterly destroys the invaders. And I, I think what's really exciting about this too is uh, this kind of brought me back into some lore from the Dreadfleet um, supplement. And that goes into, you know, hey, well, okay, well, Vampire Coast. They, they, probably, they probably don't want to have anything to do with Vampire Coast. Nay. So the Maelstrom is, is essentially the exit wound on the Warhammer world of where the Great Maw meteorite strikes. So here's an excerpt here for the coming of the Great Maw in 2750. A titanic meteorite strikes the heartland of the ogres and the Great Maw is born to forever haunt the ogre race. Two years later, the Warpstone Comet finally burrows its way through the world, emerging in the opposite hemisphere and causing the ocean there to boil. Few who see it live to tell the tale. And this is where the Maelstrom in the Sea is born. They could even have some sort of you know, religious pilgrimage to go serve the vampire coast at the Maelstrom, which might in turn turn them into uh, the abominable hulks in the army. But who knows? Who knows, you know? And as a closing note here, the ogres are extremely opportunistic with their mercenary capabilities, right? In the end times, we get Belagar hiring Goldfag, who is a huge, huge point of opposition. Like, like Goldfag is, is always bucking heads with the dwarfs and he gets hired on to help out against quick head taker and in the fight you get this really cool little excerpt about how the ogres are really helping to push the offensive against the skaven push pushing the skaven back then all of a sudden boom scarsnick appears from the crooked moon and what happens there the ogres go well we've already had a secondary deal going where yeah dwarfs you paid us we're helping you but our secondary deal was as soon as the greenskins show up they're paying us more, we help them, and we kill you. And that's exactly what you get here. Now, unfortunately, maybe fortunately, we don't get that mechanic built into Total War Warhammer, but hopefully now from this little bit here, you can see how the presence of the ogres across Nagaroth, the Southlands, Lustria, and the Old World, as well as the Badlands and the Border Princes, all makes plenty of sense when we're taking a look at Total War Warhammer 2's Vortex campaign. Moving into the individual unit, we're just going to go through them piecemeal real quick and talk maybe a little loosely about some of the lore, but we have just the generic ogre here. Now, this is your generic ogre bull, is which is typically called for the, or typically named for the just, hey, I'm an adult ogre. we have got my gut plate, I'm ready to go. And we've looked at this a little bit ago, but just to kind of look at it one more time, the ogre charge, uh, when attacking braced charge defenders, this unit only loses half of its charge bonus. Now this won't be as good in campaign because the AI is actually quite good at bracing. Um, I would actually prefer this to be different. I, I prefer Ogre Charge to be as scary as Thunderous Charge is in the tabletop. So rather than this negating braced charge defenders, I wish that this would just negate charge defense by a percentage, say 50 or 75% of expert and uh, defense versus large and, um, you know, expert in, in defense versus large. That way you get the ability that, hey, no matter what, ogres are going to do damage, braced or not braced. I think that it, the braced portion of it kind of cheats this ability a little bit. Um, I was talking to Turn about this, and he was saying that it's kind of true to form with all of the mechanics of every single race when it comes to the actual battlefield, where their campaign map mechanics are a little bit better than their, can than their actual battlefield mechanics. So I guess it is on par with the fact that it is a little bit lackluster. Um, but we also have another version of these in the Ogres with Dual Weapons. You can see them here, looking all spicy. All sorts of cool weapons I got going on. And I really am stoked on the aesthetic here for the Ogres. I, I'm, I'm excited to see the full roster. And a lot of people have said that this means that Ogre Kingdoms will not be the pre-order race. But personally, I think that this is probably most indicative of them being the pre-order race because now we've seen a sample of them. Um, but I guess we'll have to still wait for that. Now, with their uh, dual weapons, we get them having anti-infantry and AP, but still having that ogre charge. Let's jump over to the other melee unit here in the Man-Eaters. 
So again, Ogre Maneaters, the individuals who are the senior, the, the most veterans of Ogre Bowls because they're individuals who have been on campaign, right? They're the vet, they are these veteran mercenaries of many, many campaigns. So looking at their stat line, let's kind of hover over uh, just the, uh, the normal Ogres. You can see they're pretty similar. They have the same amount of armor. They get 20 more leadership. And when you look at melee attack and melee defense, it is a little bit better, right? You're getting 12 more melee attack. You're getting a lot more uh, melee defense here at 14 more. So you get a unit that is overall more durable. When it comes to their charge bonus to you, you get a small increase that charge bonus of six. And you also get immune psychology, that lovely ogre charge. Um, what I would have liked to see, though, and, and these guys are pretty true to form when it comes to the models. You can see there's a Bretonian shield on that guy over there. Maybe that's like Empire. I'm not really sure. Um, or his gut plate, no less, which is awesome. You see a lot of the uh, the tricone hats and everything like that. You get the really cool ruffled armings, more uh, common with the Empire. But I would have liked to have seen a little bit more diversity from... Uh, the lore talks about them pulling from Lizardmen... Uh, items from Araby items with turbans and the such and there's even models that reflect that too um, stuff from Cathay and Nippon so it'll be really sick to see those things brought to these guys aside from just like oh they kind of look like ogres ogre swashbucklers like I'd like I'd like them to have that other aesthetic of all these different things like imagine if one guy had a really cool empire lord hat or another guy had like a really poor fitting Bretonian helmet or some dude had a, a gut plate that was a dwarf shield rather than a Bretonian or empire shield just more aesthetics in there that kind of spice these guys up that, that they are true travelers of the world and not just simply like oh yeah uh, I was on a ship once but here's our man eaters with great weapons Take a look now at our Ogre Pistoliers, guys with pistols, as you can see. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen this, but just wanted to stay consistent and show this stuff as well for, for some of you that have not. You get some pretty devastating uh, 96 missile strength, 140 range, and I think we're going to be seeing this a lot from the Ogres, right? Everything's going to be a monstrous infantry or cavalry or beast of some sort, right? That is going to have low unit count, so expect a high amount of damage coming out of them because it's less damage. Um, as a whole because it's more damage per unit, right? That doesn't make sense. What I'm saying is there's less total uh, models in a unit, so the numbers are going to be higher. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. That doesn't mean a goddamn thing. Let's jump over, though, to the last unit we get access to with the Ogre Mercenaries. And those gut plates are moving along with this Mornfang Cavalry. Let's take a look at these bad boys. So, a very high good weapon strength at 120. They have got some melee defense at 32 and armor at 90, so they still actually have some decent enough armor. A little bit low on that melee defense, so I would kind of worry about them in perpetual combat, but a juicy 66 charge bonus going in here with a nice 40 melee attack. Um, obviously, uh, they do kind of have a bit of a, a scaling issue, I think, as far as the model on top of the mount. Uh, when you look at the, all the pictures, the mount for the Mornfangs is significantly larger. Um... Uh, so we'll see how that changes. And also, I'd like to see variation from the Mornfang. In a lot of the art, um, most of them actually have white fur. So maybe that's going to be a Regiment of Renown version, or perhaps that coloration will be unique to the Ogre tribes in Total War Warhammer 3 based off of where they start. Hey, you know, the coloration of this tribe, because it's a more northern tribe in Snowlands, these are these uh, white kind of polar-esque looking Mornfangs versus these guys, which are in the Southlands, these little bit browner in their in their uh, coloration or so on and so forth. But very excited to see how this plays out to some of the other units in the Ogre roster. There's so many other things like the Thunder Tusk and other awesome units, that, not to mention all of the artillery pieces. So hopefully this is a taste of things to come for the Ogres and that pre-order race we still, again, do not quite know. But as always, guys, if you have any questions about the Ogres, anything that you want to make a comment about as far as the lore or their presence, please, by all means, let me know. If you have a question about um, anything else that I've yet to answer in this video, too, let me know, and I'll see what I can do about getting uh, the best answer possible. But as always, thank you so much for watching here today. Just wanted to do a really quick preview of the Ogres and talk a little bit about their Ogre mercenary lore and why they've got a presence across the entire Warhammer world and just why that makes a little bit more sense. But as always, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.